What's up gamers, Dreamcast guy here, talking today about Xbox versus PlayStation, because today is a very dark time for Sony. They just got forced to sign a contract they absolutely did not want to sign. But let's talk about that. Okay, so this is going to be a very big, complicated video. Be sure to watch all of it, because things are about to get very, very spicy. Over the course of the last 18 months, obviously, Microsoft has been in court trying to buy Activision Blizzard. They're spending $70 billion to have access to World of Warcraft and Diablo and Overwatch and freaking Call of Duty, of course, itself. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, Crash Bandicoot, Spyro. The size of Activision Blizzard cannot be overstated. I mean, the size of Microsoft now, like Xbox Game Studios, just literally tripled in size. Now, of course, Sony is scared of this. Sony very much relies on those sales. PlayStation is way in first when it comes to console sales. Their system is on fire. I mean, I'm a huge fan of PlayStation. I love PlayStation exclusives. But let's face it, a lot of what makes their cash is every single game that sells on a PlayStation console, even if Sony didn't make it, they take a delicious 30% cut, which means PlayStation, because they are the biggest console on the planet, they make a huge amount just licensing stuff. So those copies of Tony Hawk, those microtransactions in Overwatch, those people getting the season pass in Diablo, all of that combined is what's really been funding a lot of Sony's development. But Sony is most afraid of losing Call of Duty, and so Microsoft offered them a contract. So we're over here on Twitter. This is Phil Spencer, the head of Xbox, and he says, We are pleased to announce that Microsoft and PlayStation have signed a binding agreement to keep Call of Duty on PlayStation following the acquisition of Activision Blizzard. We look forward to a future where players globally have more choice to play their favorite games. Now, this is definitely just empty PR speak. They love to keep saying this like, hey, now you can keep playing games on the consoles you were already playing games on. Now, the replies are predominantly a lot of people saying that this is interesting, a lot of, uh, well, a lot of Xbox fan accounts saying this is great, but here's the big thing. Jim Ryan showed up late and begrudgingly signed after Phil bent the knee. JK, good to hear. Player Essence here does bring up the major point a lot of people are talking about, which is the fact that for a long time, Everybody thought this deal might not even happen because the initial proposal, Phil Spencer last year offered Sony a three-year contract. They said, hey, okay, we'll work on something. We'll keep releasing, uh, you know, Call of Duty on PlayStation till at least 2027, and then we're going to stop, which that was basically a three-year extension of their current contract. Instead, they now redid the contract and it's now a 10-year offer. Now, we've seen this contract before. Sony has talked about this. Uh, Microsoft has talked about this. It's still crazy because specifically, Sony knew about this 10-year deal for the last couple months and over and over and over again, publicly via statements and in court documents, Sony said, screw the 10-year contract. They said, no way in hell are we ever going to sign that, which is funny because here they are with fresh ink on the page. Now, it's wild to imagine that in 2033, maybe Call of Duty is going to become an exclusive, but here, what, here is why this is just such a crucial endeavor. I actually tweeted about this. Sony makes literally billions of dollars off Call of Duty. So much insane, astronomical amounts of revenue is made by Call of Duty just being the biggest on PlayStation. So if they lost access to it, it would permanently have hurt PlayStation. Sony needs that cash. Sony games sell well. Uh, I mean, obviously, games like Spider-Man, God of War, Ragnarok, these sell tens of millions of copies. A lot of their stuff, even Last of Us remake and stuff, sells tens of millions of copies. But in a weird way, Call of Duty is funding a lot of the development, the research, the technical stuff that's done over at PlayStation. So losing that would have cost them a lot. So them signing this deal, 
It was not optional. If it was this or nothing, Sony definitely had to take it. I'm actually impressed because a lot of people are basically saying like, yeah, since Sony's making $3 billion a year, that's what we got to see. I wish we could see the details of this contract because no way would PlayStation make a regular 10-year deal only, especially without certain stipulations. A lot of people are still spitballing about this. I'm filming this just a couple hours after this was officially revealed, and a lot of people are still in that shell shock mentality of, I cannot believe after months and months and months of them saying no way would they sign this, they just instantly did it. Like right here, really insane to see Jim Ryan nuke PlayStation's public relations for 18 months straight just to agree to the same deal that everyone else did, no problem. Uh, Paul Tassie here, the journalist, says, this was just such a waste of time, money, and goodwill on Sony's end trying to more or less single-handedly stop the deal. Now, in the past, I've been called a Sony pony and an Xbox hater, and I think a lot of that misconception comes from mostly the fact that I love PlayStation exclusives. I think the games that Sony is making are by far my favorite. Gran Turismo, Horizon, that's the kind of stuff that personally I am into. But I gotta say, even as a Sony pony, it is crazy to watch how badly of an L PlayStation just took. I mean, it is insane to consider the fact that they sat down and made such concerted legal efforts to deadlock this deal. They tried their absolute best to stop this at any cost. And now that they've failed, I mean, who knows how bad this deal is going to hurt them in the long run. Honestly, I think that Microsoft is going to start yanking stuff off. I think that they've signed this deal. So, you know, PlayStation is still going to have access to Call of Duty. But this is the beginning and the end of the legal obligations of Microsoft. As it stands, I personally would not be surprised if every single future Activision Blizzard game is only coming to Xbox. New Crash Bandicoot, new Tony Hawk, new Spyro the Dragon, new crazy cool stuff, I don't know, Skylanders, Toys to Life projects, weird games, indie games, big projects, tiny projects. The amount of stuff that just got straight up swept off the table for PlayStation. I'm sure they're happy they still have access to Call of Duty, but right now, if Microsoft wants to take the ball and go home, they can, which is still, I mean, people don't like when I say this, but in the long run, I think this deal is going to end up being a scary precedent that has just been set. We are now in the age of acquisitions. Sony, I'm not worried about Sony buying stuff up. I'm not worried about Nintendo buying stuff up. Even though technically, I think the current market cap is, you know, uh, Nintendo has like $250 billion or something. So Nintendo could theoretically buy stuff up. I'm afraid of the other guys. I'm afraid of the fact that a $70 billion deal got to go through. What happens when Tencent and the power of China starts trying to buy Resident Evil and you know, censor the gore? What happens when Amazon decides to start buying Assassin's Creed and forcing you to watch ads in the middle of your exploration? This stuff is now on the table. Microsoft, I think Microsoft is going to be fine. I think Microsoft is not going to use these games. They're not going to abuse these games. This is fine. The Activision Blizzard deal is fine. I'm afraid of what comes next. I do think we have, in a way, opened up Pandora's box. So in the long run, uh, let's hope that gaming stays focused on gaming. Now, what's this right here? Yeah, right. So here is this deal. Thinking back to February when Microsoft was waving around a contract for Sony to sign for this Call of Duty deal, and Jim Ryan was telling Bobby Kotick to his face that he just wanted to get the Activision deal blocked. How things have changed, both on the regulatory side and the Sony side. Sony definitely lost. They took an L that I feel like is going to hurt them for a very long time. Right now, Jim Ryan is actually trending worldwide. Uh, I mean, at this point, I think there is a good chance that <laughs> Sony shareholders choking out Jim Ryan for signing that for not signing that deal. I mean, I think there is a chance that Jim Ryan actually gets fired, which is crazy to think about because I made a video like two months ago saying that maybe Phil Spencer is not doing his best. It's pretty weird to think about that in a matter of weeks, 
now we're at a point where we're considering Jim Ryan getting the axe. But these have just been some off-the-cuff thoughts. What do you guys think about the Activision Blizzard deal? Is this good in the long run? Is this bad in the long run? Take a step back from the plastic box and actually consider what do you think the long-term ramifications of trillionaires buying billionaire, billion dollar companies is going to be. I guess we're all going to find out whether we like it or not. <laughs> Either way, at least we still got caught. Thanks so much for watching gamers. If you enjoyed this video, give it a big old thumbs up, share with your friends and subscribe if you haven't already. And please keep dreaming. Thanks so much for watching that video. If you want to see something else, you can always click this link to see what I put up last or, you know, subscribe and see what's coming up next. Also, I promise that whatever I do, it'll try not to suck.